So how many of you guys, you walked in today, you got cheered for, you got a crown on, you guys got your crowns on right now. Does it feel special whenever somebody goes out of their way to make you feel important? Like your birthday, everybody love your birthday. Uh, your family, do you guys have like, you get to choose where to eat kind of thing. Like you get birthday gifts, like you, you get excited because that day is about you and you only, right? How many, you, you love the feeling of being treated with importance. Show of hands. I want you to turn to the person next to you, talk about a time you felt specifically important because of the way people treated you. You got 30 seconds, go. All right, shout out. Something, something that you mentioned. What, what's the time that made you feel really important? Nice. That's pretty exciting. That's, that's my favorite kind of stuff too. Anybody else want to share? The time that you just felt really important? Your birthday? Was there something specific about your birthday that made you feel super special? You got like a birthday parade during COVID where people honked and waved at That's super cool. Your brother got that. Anybody else get that kind of thing? Like, yeah? That's, I saw those on Facebook a lot. Yeah. Nice. She made your favorite pancakes for you. That's, that's pretty good. There you go. Yeah, mom wants the credit too. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You guys, anybody else been surprised at a birthday party? Like you walk in, there's a surprise party, and you're like, ah, like, yeah, that's pretty fun. All right, cool. Well, we all we all know what it feels like to be made important, to be made a big deal out of, and, and it's nice. It it feels like you know the people in your life care about you. And it's a, it's a good feeling. Maybe you have a similar experience and it, maybe it wasn't your birthday. Maybe you got awarded something. Maybe, I don't know what it was, but you, you have felt at a certain point in your life that there was something that made you feel super special. You know, here at Victory, we, we talk about all kinds of things as it pertains to our walk in the faith and our walk, trying to become more like Jesus and everything we do, the way we treat each other, the way we love one another. And, and so sometimes that means we talk about really fun stuff that's uplifting and encouraging. And sometimes it means we talk about stuff that's sometimes uncomfortable and hard to talk about. But that's why we talk about these things, because we believe it's important to talk about everything, no matter how uncomfortable it is, because God has something to say about every situation. And as you guys are growing, as you're maturing, as you're developing, and you're figuring out how your faith becomes your own, it's important to sometimes talk about things that aren't always super comfortable to talk about. But what I want you guys to recognize is that this is a safe place. This is a place where you should, be feel, uh, you should feel free to be able to talk about things without being judged. You can talk about things where we actually can sympathize because we've all gone through things. Okay? We've all gone through things where people hurt us. We've all gone through things where we've, own, we've made our own mistakes, and that's hurt us. We've all lived life as imperfect humans. And so this is not a place of judgment, but a place where we just talk about what God says to be true and where we care about one another. And today we're going to talk about a term, and we're going to talk about a word, something that's, that's sometimes thrown around. Uh, sometimes it's not something that you hear a lot, especially at your age, um, but it's the idea, and the word is consent. So we're going to talk about this because ultimately when you break down what consent is, it's, it's, it breaks down to just really honor and respect. That's, that's what we're, where we're going with this. But consent simply means to give permission for something to happen, to do something or allow something to take place. For instance, if you let a sibling borrow a jacket or something, you gave consent for them to borrow that. If your parents had to sign a permission slip form for you to go on a field trip, or if you're in high school and your parents have to register you for the event we're going to have tonight, you had to get a parent's consent to do that, right? You guys have heard this term before. Consent is, it just means that you're giving permission or you're agreeing to allow whatever is about to happen to happen, that you are taking part in it. Um, but in, in a lot of times, this, this has a very special place when it comes to when we're talking about uh, with the way we treat others and, and relationships and dating and physical touch and what's allowed, what's not allowed. How are we going to treat one another when it comes to this thing? How do we show honor and respect to one another? How, how do we go about this conversation that is really a broader conversation in our culture today? Consent is a big word, and sometimes we don't talk about it in a framework that is applicable 
for students your age. Because a lot of times when we're talking about things, some of you, you're like, yeah, we need to talk about that in middle school. Some of you are probably like, that doesn't even apply to me yet. And, and I get where you're, where you're coming from on that. But the way we treat others and the way we let others treat us is a big deal. Consent has a big part of, of every one of our lives. And, and uh, I, I get that some of you, maybe uh, you don't believe that this has much to do with you yet. And I can understand why. Because if we're honest, when I was in middle school, I, I didn't feel like I had a whole lot of ability to give consent to anything because my parents made all my decisions for me, right? Your parents take you places. They, they, you know, they tell you what to do, how to help you, help you manage your time. They, they give you tasks and chores around the house you, you have to do. It's, it's, it's like, uh, well, you go to school too, and teachers give you assignments. You have, if you're in a sport, then a coach teaches you and trains you. It, it, it seems like... Uh, Pretty much the way that you're supposed to live is kind of governed by people around you. So maybe you don't feel like the idea of consent really applies to you yet because the adults in your life typically have most of the control anyway. And, and so if that's where you're at, I, I, I understand why you're that way, but I don't think you give yourself a mu- a enough credit because as, as fifth graders, sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders, you actually have control of a lot of things. And you're getting to that age where uh, developmental psychologists call it the... the where you're becoming autonomous. Uh, it's where you're becoming self-aware and you're, you're growing in your own individuality, which means you are aware of where you conform to certain cultural structures and where you don't. You're, you're recognizing where you fit in social situations and where you don't. You're recognizing your own influence and where it kind of stops. You're, you're coming of age where you're recognizing, you know, that there are things about you that make you unique, that you are an individual person, not just a part of a bigger system. And that's, that's, that's where you're at developmentally. And so this is the perfect age to talk about and help you recognize that actually, yeah, you do have control of a lot of things. You have control of a lot of things in your life, more control than you think. You know, you, you have a, a, a responsibility to not only give consent to others, but also to respect the consent that others have been given to you. And this is a really big deal because this, this seems really simple, but it's really easy to get muddy and overlooked because what do you do when you feel obligated for something? What do you do when you feel pressure to say yes to something that you actually want to say no to? Well, what are your friends going to think? What are your fa- what's your family going to think? What, what are the people around you going to think? It, it, it seems to get muddier and a little less clear the older that you get. And so that's why it's important especially at this age, that you understand this idea and that you know where, where you stand and how you think about it. So uh, consent is really about the way that we treat others. I mentioned that at the beginning, right? At the end of the day, it boils down to love and respect. And we talk about love and respect a lot in, in this group setting. We talk about love and respect, about how we're supposed to treat one another, how we're supposed to respect one another, because Jesus, you know, he said the greatest commandment is to love God and love Others. So this isn't a foreign topic, but we're just going to talk about it through the lens of this word because it's important for you guys to, to understand that it does apply in ways that maybe sometimes we overlook. It's really about the way that we treat each other. Um, and, and when consent is violated, when consent is not respected, it really boils down to, to this root issue of selfishness, right? And, and you guys have been taught about selfishness. You guys know, I know, that we're just kind of selfish from the very beginning. I have a two-year-old, and I didn't teach him to be selfish, but he's very selfish. He wants to do what he wants to do. He wants to watch what he wants to watch, and, and he wants things his way. He wants to eat what he wants to eat, and that's just how he is. He doesn't really have a concern for how much work it is when I've already made something for him, but he wants something else, right? He's, he's not concerned about that, and when it boils down to it, really, uh, when you're thinking uh, about more about what you want rather than what's best for others around you, that's, that's when sometimes you recognize that, that consent has become about something it's not for you. And in relationships, when you're thinking more about what you want rather than what's best for the other person, that's, that's when this becomes a problem. Another time where this becomes a problem is maybe you're just thinking about what you can get away with, right? You, you've been in situations before where you've uh, been given a choice or maybe you want something and you're going to see how far you can push the line, how far you can come up to the line without crossing it. How, how much can you get away with? And maybe you're really just thinking about the consequences. About how much can I do until I don't get in trouble? And you're not thinking about what's best for everybody. That, that can sometimes be an issue. 
Sometimes this gets a little difficult because maybe you're, you're talking with somebody, maybe you're in a relationship, may, maybe you have friendships, and, and you, you go to a friend's house, for example, and, and they want to watch a movie that you know you're probably not allowed to watch. So how, how, do you, how do you backtrack? How do you learn how to communicate your no when it feels very difficult, when it feels like you're obligated to move forward with something. You don't want to spoil it for the rest of the friends that are there, right? You don't want to spoil it for the group by speaking, up again. hey, I don't want to watch this show or, or whatever it is. It's difficult. So m- maybe you've been in a situation where you were, we were in a conversation or relationship with somebody, or maybe where you had said yes previously, but you didn't feel comfortable with it and you'd like to go back and you'd like to change your mind. Or maybe you've had this done to you and somebody changed their mind on you. And then, and then you're left, the, well, but we've, you know, what, you're, you're changing things. And now when you are thinking about only yourself, remember the selfishness thing, what you want, then you don't think about what's best for the people around you. And ultimately, you're not showing respect to those people then. Uh, maybe uh, this whole thing is complicated for you because maybe, uh, maybe you've been asked to give your consent for something that you were not comfortable with. Kind of like I mentioned before with the other examples. Uh, Maybe it has to do with, you know, stuff in social situations with friends. Maybe it has stuff to do with your friends. uh, And maybe it has stuff to do maybe with relationships. If you've you've had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, then this really comes into play. Because you're at the age where I know several of you are thinking about this or, or have a boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm not saying that's good or bad. But I am saying that it prompts questions like these. When it comes to dating relationships specifically... How do you communicate where your boundaries are? Boundaries are a good thing to talk about in any relationship, but especially in dating relationships. Uh, may- maybe you've been asked to do something that you're not comfortable with there. And how do you say no? How do you say no to, uh, I, don't, I don't actually want to kiss. I'm just good with holding hands. H- how do you say, actually, I don't want to send pictures. Can we just talk? How do you say those kind of things when you feel pressure and you're put in a situation you're not comfortable with? Maybe you've been in those moments and you didn't know what to do. I think we've all been there. We've been in situations where we just were faced with something we don't really know what to do. Maybe you've been in a situation where, where you did actually communicate your no very efficiently, but the other people did not respect that and that was violated. I understand we all come from different places when it comes to this idea, when it comes to this topic So what do you do in those situations? And ultimately, like I said, it comes down to honor and respect. So what what is honor? Because when we think about the way we treat each other in terms of honor, it puts things in a little bit of a different perspective. Okay, honor is is basically this. Honor is uh, another way that we say that we treat others and ourselves with respect. That's, That's ultimately how it boils down. Honor is when we treat each other and ourselves with respect respect. You know, when you guys walked in, uh, we, we tried to go out of our way to make a point that you are honored, that, that we, we love and we respect you. And, and so imagine, imagine what it would be like if, if you treated everybody around you like royalty. Check out this video clip. Everybody seen the, the Lion King? So check this out. <laughs> so so uh, I, I think it'd be pretty awesome if, you know, every, every time you walked into a room, everybody just like, like started cheering and hooping and hollering like those monkeys jumping up and down or like, like cheering for you and kneeling for you. Like that would be pretty awesome, right? But I, I don't think anybody in this room is actually a, a, a prince or princess. If so, then I'm sorry. But if, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> and so I don't think like you can actually expect people to treat you that way all the time. But my point is not that you should treat everybody and everybody should treat you like you're a king or queen. My point is the idea of honor. It's the way you think about people. It's the way that you esteem one another. It's the way that you put others' needs in front of your own needs. It, it, it's when you think about others before yourself. It's when you honor one another. And it plays a big part in consent is honoring one another. And so, uh, I actually want to read from you. This is a passage from, uh, from Romans. This is what Paul wrote, and, and he's writing to the church in Rome in, in, a, in a season where you just have to recognize this. It, when Paul is write, writing to the church in Rome, it was, it was, there was many layers where people did not feel honored and respected by another, okay? So, one hand was the Roman Empire. The capital was Rome, Okay? So there was a lot of hostility towards Christians, okay? That was going on. The other thing that was going on was that the church in Rome had been displaced 
previously to Paul writing this letter. What I mean by this is the Jews were exiled from Rome, and then they were allowed back in. And when the Jews were let back in, the Gentiles, anybody who was not Jewish, anybody who didn't grow up with the history of of the nation of Israel with God and, and Moses and all that kind of stuff, well, now the Gentiles were running the church because the Jews had been exiled for a period of time. The Jews come back, and now all the Gentiles are running the church. And so now they're trying to see, well, who's better than who? Well, how do we respect one another? And Paul is writing to the church that was very divided. I mean, you've seen people have full-on arguments, people that should really, like, they're arguing over something dumb, and they should really just get over it and, like, be friends and be nice to each other. And you can see that from a distance, but the people who are in it, maybe you've been in it, where you're in an argument with somebody, you can't see the common ground. You only see the differences. Sounds a little bit like today. And, and Paul says this with this tension going on in the Roman church. This is what he says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. He says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Sounds a lot like what we've been talking about. Be devoted to one another in love. I don't care your differences. You all have the commonality of love and let that be your first language. Honor one another above yourselves. We can show honor and we can show others that we love them and we care about them by honoring them, even despite differences. And basically, when we honor somebody else, it means that we are showing them respect. So I've thrown that word around a lot today. So let's define respect. Respect is when we show people uh, honor, when we show people respect with our words, actions, thoughts, and behaviors. It's not just in the things you say. It's not just in the way you treat other people. It's not just in the way you think about other people. It's all of the above. When you respect somebody, it's when you can think highly of others despite your differences even. It's easy to respect somebody that you love and admire. It's difficult to respect somebody that you disagree with. But Paul is saying, devote to one another in love. Show honor to one another. That means you respect people with your words, actions, thoughts, and behaviors. And and this, this is a really, really big deal. Because when you're in a situation where you maybe don't feel comfortable, or when you feel like you need to set boundaries, or when you feel like consent is becoming a primary concern for you, even if you don't use that word consent in your head, you think about the idea that consent connotates. You're thinking about the idea that, that you know, how do, how do I give permission? How do I say what I feel in a loving way? And when it comes, when we honor one another, see, this takes it beyond just giving permission to somebody, when you honor somebody, what it is saying is you are going above and beyond consent to show concern for the person's well-being more than your own. Does that make sense? Consent is where you're just worried about a yes or a no answer and whether or not you get the one you're looking for. But honor is when it goes above and beyond that consent into where you actually care more about what's in the best interest of the other person than for what you want. And this is huge. This is huge. Because in our culture today, this conversation usually stops at yes or no. It stops at yes or no most of the time. But as Christians, if we're called to be devoted to one another, honor one another, then that means we think about others before ourselves. What's best for them rather than what I want. And when you've devoted to treating someone with, uh, with things like love and respect and honor, that means you're committed to treating them this way all the time. Not just when you agree with them, not just when they're doing what you want them to do, but all the time. And here, here's what's cool. We all deserve honor. We all deserve honor. There's a lot of things you and I don't deserve. Honor is one of those things that we all deserve. Just as as much as we should extend honor to others, we should expect to be be treated with honor. And this is much easier said than done, and and I understand that. But when it comes to honor, honoring and and respecting one another, honor others and expect to be treated, uh, and expect to be honored by others. Honor others and expect to be honored by others. If we don't have this primary expectation that I will honor those around me, and I will expect to be honored by them, then if you don't have that, then it means you will let people not treat your no seriously. Because ultimately, if we're being selfish, if we lean towards our selfish nature, we will push others around. Some of you have seen that. 
Some of you have been victim of that. Some of you have done that because you know the limits that you can push on other people. But if you honor others, honor others and, re- and expect to be honored by others. This is, this is all nice, but it's, it's difficult to actually live out. So here, let me give you a couple application points as we wrap up. So uh, well, number one, show honor to others. So how, how do we do that? Okay, That's the first part of that last statement. Show honor to others. Make honor your goal. Filter every interaction with everybody else around you from the perspective, how can I honor this person? Even when you're heated in an argument, how do I honor them? How do I not belittle them, but still just, if I disagree with somebody, how do I talk about the part that I disagree with without tearing apart the person themselves? There's a way to do that in a loving way. And that's huge, especially, again, in our culture right now. How, how, how do we show honor, make honor your goal? Number two, respect the no. If somebody says no, stop pushing. If somebody says no about something, I'm not comfortable. If they're hesitant, don't try to convince them into why you want a yes. Don't try to convince them that it's okay. Don't try to convince them of something they're not comfortable with. Let their no's be no's. This is how you show honor to one another. You make it your goal and you respect the no. This is, this is huge. Number two, how do you expect to be honored? This is, this is a little more tricky because it's, harder to, it's easier to understand how you should treat somebody else. It's harder to understand how you should think about the way others treat you. So how do you expect to be honored? First off, you have decide in advance how you want to be treated. That means before you get in a relationship with somebody, maybe a romantic relationship, before you enter into that, think about your boundaries. Think about what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. Think about what's okay. If you do that, you're going to be way ahead of the game of most of your peers. You're going to be way ahead when it comes to to expecting to be honored. Decide how you want to be treated. Number two is practice your no. For for some people, saying no is really easy. It's your favorite word. Ever since you were a kid, no. You know, you got that Megan Trainor song, my name is no. No is easy for you. Others of you, this is really difficult because you don't want to disappoint other people. And I get that. You, you don't want to offend other people, and I get that. But practice your no, even in the little things. It's okay to have an opinion. If you honor one another, if you honor the people around you, you can honor them and s- still say how you feel. So practice your no. It may be awkward. It may be really difficult at times, but it's really important that you're comfortable speaking up for how you feel. And that leads us to our last point, which is speaking up with confidence. If you have decided how you want to be treated, if if you've practiced saying no to things that you don't agree with, then speak up with confidence in those convictions. Don't let people push you around. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated or, or treated like you're obligated to say yes to something. If somebody says to you, well, I did this for you. I did this with you in mind as a way to try to get you to say yes to them. Run away from that person because they are only treating you in a manner to get something out of you in return and they don't truly care about your best interests. Speak up with confidence. So as we kind of wrap up, those are some application points, but I want you to remember the whole point of today is to honor one another. Honor others and expect to be honored by others. When you do that, When you're able to do that, it doesn't mean you'll be able to avoid every hardship in life, but it will set you ahead of the game when it comes to a lot of issues that come from consent. As you head to small groups, I want you to ask yourself, what's one way that I can honor others? What's one practical way that I can honor others? Let me pray, and then uh, I'll dismiss you guys into your groups.